Got one. There you go. Good little guy. Little large mouth. Little guy had to eat it. Had to eat it. Had to eat it. Just had to have that split shot. <laughs> Give it to me. You're fattening up, little guy. There you go. That's a pretty decent little guy. That'll work. Hey folks, Glenn May here at BassResource.com. Today I want to talk about winter fishing. Primarily nine lures you need for winter bass fishing. This is not the only nine lures you can use. This is not the nine lures that are best for all the time of all time, the greatest nine lures. So don't get upset if I don't mention your lure. These are the nine, what I consider the nine most productive lures during the winter time. Yes, there are other lures that work. I just want to throw that disclaimer out right away. The thing you got to keep in mind during the winter time is bass are, they're not lethargic. They're not slow moving. They're not, you know, hibernating, sleeping, whatever, what a lot of people think about bass. The bait is, the forage that they're going after often is. Bait fish are struggling to stay alive as the, as the water temperatures get lower. They slow down, they're not moving as much. Some of them are struggling to actually survive. So they're, you know, they're, 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 they're dying off. A lot of them are dying off and following, struggling to stay upright. Crawdads, their metabolism slows down. They, their movement slows down. They're not skidding across the bottom as fast. Gobies, sculpin, same sort of thing. They, everything slows down. All of the bait fish around that the bass are feeding on and the, and the forage is slowing down. So keep that in mind. The bite also will slow down because of that, but also bass are cold-blooded creatures. So the metabolism is dictated and controlled by the water temperature. The higher the water temperature, the higher the metabolism is, meaning they'll feed more often. So a bass may feed seven times a day during the peak of the summer, but in the wintertime, it's more like once every seven days. So there's far, more, far fewer bass during the wintertime that are in feeding mode. So just by that nature alone, the bite is going to be slower. It doesn't mean the bass are slower and lethargic. There's just less bass that are feeding and what they're feeding on is moving slower. So that's really important when I go through these lures. Keep in mind you're trying to imitate lethargic and slow moving bait fish and forage, not, oh, I've got to go real slow and moving and, and lethargic because the bass are lethargic. It's a different mindset, but it's a way to keep focus on the way that you're going to move these lures I'm going to talk about. So let's get down to it. In no specific order, the first lure I want to talk about is deep suspending jerk baits. What I mean by that is jerk baits that dive down to 10 feet or more and actually just hover in place and don't even move. <clears throat> let it get down there and let it sit. And how you work it is just slight twitches, not real hard jerks. Again, you're imitating something slow and lethargic. So slight twitches, little small jerks, and let it pause for a long amount of time. Minutes, not even moving. This is why you need a suspending jerk bait because you don't want it to float up to the top while you're, it's paused. You can, sometimes I'll take a little bit of solder wire and put it around the hook shanks to give it a little bit of weight so it sinks very slowly. So it looks like a bait fish that's dying and then I give it a little jerk and it might pop up a little bit. And that might help with the action a bit. But those are the type of baits that work really well. They imitate those dying uh, bait fish and they can be very productive in the winter time. The next winter bait I like to use is a blade bait. These seem pretty basic. They're small, but they imitate a a small minnow, a small bait fish. They have that vibrating characteristics of a lipless crankbait, but you can get them down deep. They cast a mile in the wind because often you're, because there's a good breeze right now, you're often fishing in the wind in the winter time. You just can't get away from it. And these baits are great and easy to cast through that and then work it at a variety of different depths. What I like to do is there's two different ways to fish it. One is, is yo-yo it off the bottom. Just rip it up off the bottom and let it flutter back down. A lot of times the bites occur as you're pulling it up off the bottom. You get that sudden movement, especially if you just let it sit on the bottom, long pause for a little bit, and then pull it up off the bottom. That action can often trigger a strike. And a lot of times also I like to drag it across structure in deeper water. Just let it bounce and move and vibrate across that. It's either I, I, I take the boat 
and just drift it over the top of structure, points, humps, that sort of thing. Or I'll reel it. I'll cast over it and I'll just reel it in nice and slow and let it occasionally hit the bottom. And that works really well during the winter time. Another type of bait that I like to use are jigging spoons, metal jigging spoons. Jigging spoons mimic a dying bait fish. So a lot, this is a vertical presentation. You drop it down to the fish, let it hit the bottom, and then pull it up off the bottom and let it flutter and fall on loose line, on slack line. It looks like a dying bait, bait fish. It, if you've ever watched them, they kind of zigzag down, they flutter, they twirl, they, they, it's erratic. That, even though the spoon doesn't look like anything in nature, that action mimics exactly a dying bait fish, and that's what the bass are triggering. So you can fish a spoon over all kinds of different structure and different depths and use that action to trigger a lot of bites. Another metal bait that I like to use is the tail spinner. This is sort of a hybrid between the jigging spoon and the blade bait because you can fish it like a blade bait or like a jigging spoon. The two different methods that I just mentioned, the two different blades and different baits and how you fish them, that's how you can fish a tail spinner in both ways. So it's really a versatile bait and sometimes that little extra flash with that tail spin, a little bit of vibration is all you need to trigger bites when they say, for example, won't hit a spoon, but you fish a, a tail spinner the exact same way, sometimes you can get more bites out of that, that school of fish. You might catch a bunch with a jigging spoon, say for example, and then the, the bite dies off, throw in a tail spinner and you might catch a few more. Another bait that I like to fish a lot during the winter time is the underspin. This has been a bait that's been around for a long, long time, but it's really gained popularity in the last few years because it's won several tournaments in the early, early spring, actually late winter, when the water's at, almost at its coldest, underspins do really well. You just put on a little, little shad type plastic on the back of it, maybe a shad tail, right? just thread it on there, and it imitates a little minnow, something like a tail spinner, but now you're using a soft plastic, so it has a little bit different action, maybe a little boot tail on there, and it can really shine really well, fishing the same way you would a tail spinner, one of the things that I do is I'll use some super glue to keep that, that soft plastic bait on that, that tail spinner. It, it keeps it from being tore up a lot. So it might last several fish versus one or two sometimes because that soft plastic is, can tear so easily. So use a little bit of super glue to put it on your tail spinner. It might make it last a little bit longer. Another bait that really works well for me in the wintertime is your basic grub. I think this is a real underutilized bait, particularly around you know, most of the United States, especially in the southern areas. For some reason, grubs just have kind of lost the popularity, but not with me. <laughs> I got a lot of them. I've been fishing them for decades. It works year round, but especially in the wintertime, what I'll do is I'll take a, a just a bare football head jig, quarter ounce, sometimes up to a half ounce football head jig, thread on a three inch white grub, and this is why I fish it deep. I'm talking 25 feet deep or deeper. So the water, the, the light penetration isn't as much. This is why I use a white grub, just to give some contrast on the bottom. The color isn't, if I use a darker colored grub, it's gonna blend in too much. I use a white grub, throw it out over these deep structure. I'm looking at humps, ridges, submerged islands, long points, and I'll just drag it. Don't lift and hop and make a lot of motion, but just, Put the trolling motor on slow, hang that rod out to the side, and just drag that bait over that structure real slowly, and you get a lot of bites that way. It can be very productive, so don't overlook a grub in the wintertime. Now, another bait that's really productive during the, winter, during the wintertime is a jig. There's really two different types of jigs that I use. One is your rubber-skirted jig, and I use that, you know, football head jig, again, because I'm fishing structure, but here I've got, a, a, the trailer I use on it, I won't use one that's got a lot of action and movement like a rage tail. I use something like a V&M cherry bug or something like that that doesn't have a lot of movement or a zoom chunk. That, those things just have less, a lot less movement and they look more natural during the winter time. And I'll fish those the same way I did with that grub that I just mentioned. Just drag it over that structure nice and slowly. Another type of jig I'll use is a hair jig. So on the bottom, you can crawl it again, just like you did with the grubs, and you're mimicking, in this case, either a goby or, or say, a sculpin, and they stay on the bottom. Sculpins don't have air bladders, so they don't lift up off the bottom, so keep it on the bottom. They look natural. Or you can use a hair jig. If you find those bait fish, and you can see 
like where they intersect with the structure. Say bait fish are holding 20 feet of water, you can find a nice tapering point, and that's where they're at. Bass will sit up underneath them, underneath them and wait for those dying in, in those dying and dead bait fish falling through and they'll engulf them. So take your hair jig and drop it down through that skull and sometimes you can catch a lot of fish. Works really well with balls of perch. Happens in the winter time. They perch really bunch up in tight schools and you can just drop it down through that school of perch if you do it fast enough. I use a little bit heavier jig because the perch like to eat these things too. Punch it down through that school and when you reach those bass it won't reach the bottom. <laughs> so hair jig can be really good. The next type of baits I like to use are finesse baits. Primarily drop shot and split shot rigs. I'm using four inch hand poured finesse worms. That can be deadly during the winter time. They don't have a lot of movement. They're very subtle. You can move them real slowly, crawl them on the bottom with a split shot or just barely off the bottom. I use a shorter leader during the winter time than I do in the summertime. So whereas in the summer I'm using 18 to 24 inch leader between the hook and the, the, the weight, I'll use maybe 10 inch, 8 inch because the fish, a lot of times the bass are hanging out right on the bottom. So I want to get that bait right near them. So a little finesse worm works really well for that. Little minnow imitation, three inch minnow imitation, again moving it lethargically and slowly so it looks like a bait fish that's just struggling to stay alive can really be appealing to the bass. And finally the last lure that I like to use, and not certainly not the least, one that's very productive for me year round but especially productive in the winter time is a three and a half inch tube. I like to fish that again on a split shot rig, drag that behind on a split shot, but I find it to be really productive if I just thread it on a jig head, a little ball head jig head with a wire guard on it, quarter ounce is all I need, maybe a three eighth ounce but nothing heavier than that. Sometimes I'll even go lighter to an eighth ounce because what you want to do is you want it to spiral downwards look like a dying bait fish. Get that action in. So it's really the fall that you're aiming for, especially early part of the winter when a lot of the bait fish are dying, that's what you want to key on. So a lighter jig head, rig it a little cockeyed on the jig head so that it, it spirals downward, that death spiral can be really, really productive. Later on in the winter, when there's not as many bait fish that are dying, you know, a lot of them have died off by now, then I'll put it on a heavier jig head and just crawl it on the bottom and drag it like I showed you with the jigs and with the, the grubs. Those things, you, you, the same thing with a, with a tube can be extremely productive. Make sure you make long pauses every now and then. Don't just constantly drag it. Just move it along, give it a pause, wait a while, and then move it again real slowly. Just crawl along the bottom. Just make it look like a crawdad that's slowly lumbering along that can't get away or isn't going to move very quickly if a bass attacks it. It, it, it looks dynamite. It's a great presentation. I love fishing tubes in the wintertime. So those are the top baits that I find very productive during the wintertime. Again, it's not the only baits you can use. I've caught bass on crankbaits and on spinnerbaits and topwaters and other lures during, this, during the wintertime. So don't get all upset if I didn't name your bait. Also, again, keep in mind, these aren't the, the best baits of all time, so I'm not giving that list. This is just for wintertime only. If you have at least these nine baits in your tackle box during the winter time, you're bound to catch some fish. For more tips and tricks like this, visit BassResource.com.